All right, so we're going to be diving into the arpeggiator inside of Dune 2. Now, this isn't just an arp or an arpeggiator. It actually can be a full-blown sequencer that can play back MIDI patterns, and we'll get into all that in a second. So let's just focus on the step sequencer part itself. So this is what it looks like. It's a pretty standard-looking step sequencer, and we're going to run through all the controls really quick. So I have a lead pulled up. Sounds like that. So what we can do is... This Under this type, you'll change it from Step Sequencer to MIDI, but we want to stay on Step Sequencer for now. You can load up different patterns, so you can get the hang of what's going on with the arpeggiator. All right, so we loaded something up and nothing's happening. What we have to do is we have to activate the ARP on all voices here, if you want all voices to be arpeggiated, in your Voice Edit Common section. That's a pretty cool pattern. So you can you can kind of cycle through these if you want to get the hang of what's going on a little bit better. Right. So let's let's go back to uh, we'll just zero this out by changing the patch again and go back to the ARP. All right. So let's talk about these different controls down here. The edit steps. If you click on these, you'll see that the step number below the sequencer will change. So you have up to 32 steps in your step sequencer. Well, what's a step? Or what's a step sequencer? Maybe you guys don't know. If A step sequencer is something that will allow you to hold down one key or a couple keys on your keyboard or key it in with your MIDI information, and it will play whole sequences, hence the term step sequencer. Now, the reason it's called step is because you have these individual little steps that you can, you can key in information to by semitones. So I'll show you what I mean by that. We're going to take the steps down to three just for this demonstration real quick. We're going to turn the rate down to an eighth note, so it's slower, an eighth note rate. So right now we have a three-step sequence, potentially, if we create it. So I'm going to turn on my ARP, and now I'm going to turn... Actually, we'll do four. So we'll do four, and in note zero, which is the note you push, I'll leave it at zero. Then I'm going to pitch this up to one semitone. So if I hit a C, this, that second step will now be a C sharp. And then this will be pitched up to positive two. So this will be a D. And this will be three. So it's kind of like we're doing a scale. So let's listen to this. All right, see, I'm just holding down one key. Look down here. I'll just push with my mouse. So that's what a step sequencer is for. It's to create sequences, gates, rhythmic elements to your tracks. Uh, so as you just got an idea, you can do actual patterns. It doesn't have to be scalar. Uh, that was just a demonstration. So I could do 0, 12, 0, 12, and we get this alternating octave pattern. That's 1980s music right there. Or uh, indie, e indie dance music if you're getting into that. So yeah, double click and it will turn back to 0. You can go down all the way to negative 36, so you can get very low with it. It uh, just depends what you want to do or what you're trying to create. So talking about these other controls, the velocity is going to be, depending on the mode that you have selected, it's going to actually be a velocity-sensitive uh, key or step to your sequence, which is cool. The tie note's kind of cool, so let's listen to this. So let's get our little scale back. Plus one, plus two, plus three. Actually, let's just do three. Kind of like the Jaws theme going on right now. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's look at what the tie does. If I put the tie on the first note, listen to this. See so it kind of like ties in or almost glides. We well, actually have a slide control down here. So to hear this slide effect, you have to have the tie on. So if I crank this up. So that's pretty cool because you actually have glide and portamento in your step sequencer slash arp. All right, moving right along here, let's go down to the bottom and start discussing these different modes. So most step sequencers will give you different modes that will determine how it will play back the sound. So I'm going to leave this on just four steps for now, and we will do up. So if I play a chord right now, so I'm playing this note, but if when I play a chord, it starts up on that G, so it plays your highest note that you're playing. So it's going. 
So the definition of what's going on with an up is it's going to successively trigger notes for all keys currently pressed from the lowest to the highest note, and then it repeats that sequence. All right, if we move on now to the down, that mode is the exact inverse of that. It's going to sequence the lowest notes first. Up down is going to be a combination of these two. With the up down mode, it's going to trigger all keys pressed or MIDI information lowest to highest note and then back. So let me play a chord for you. All right, down up now. So it's the inverse of that, alternate up. This is going to alternate the upward steps. It's going to be, it's kind of like an alternative to up mode where it's going to be a different pattern when moving up. It's a different variation. All right, alt down is going to be an alternative to the down, but still moving in that downward fashion. Random, this will just randomize everything. All right, the next mode is chord. This will, if you hold down a chord, it'll chop it up and kind of gate it. love that mode with step sequencers. Silent. This is an interesting one. So I didn't know what the heck this did for a while and then it clicked. The silent mode is there so you can modulate things within the arpeggiator. So this is a special mode as the Dune manual calls it. And it's not going to trigger anything. It's not going to trigger a note or a step or a sequence. The sole purpose of this mode is to basically use it in your mod matrix. So if you choose our ARP note, or ARP velocity, or both, in your modulation matrix, you can then use that to modulate the filter, you can modulate the oscillators, there's a lot of things you can do with it. So play around with it if you're curious how that sounds, it can do some cool things. All right, then the last one we have, our second to last one is dynamic. Dynamic mode is going to play back a monophonic sequence or pattern. So this also is relevant to the MIDI patterns, which we'll get into in a, mo in a moment. And now next we have the playback. This will play back polyphonic MIDI patterns. And we'll look at that in a minute as well. All right, the octave control. This will control how many octaves your se sequence arpeggiation is going to go up or down or up, down, or whatever mode you have it on. So let's put this on up. And with two octaves, I'm going to start on this note and play a C minor chord. See, it went down to that whole octave below as opposed to, right? So if we go to four, it'll go down real low. All right, let's look at this with up now. So I'm starting on this C note and it's just gonna keep going up four octaves above it. That's all that's doing. Steps, we've already talked about this. This will allow you to create how many steps your sequence is. You can go from one to 32. All right, sync, this will sync it to your host BPM and make it have this musical rate value of actual things like quarter notes, half notes, triplets, all that. If you turn this off, you get Hertz, which is free running. Now, why would you want to use Hertz? Well, there's sometimes a cool application for that. Let's say you have a pad and you just want to create some movement, some subtle movement. And the MSEG or the LFO is too static or it's too robotic. You can do a lot with this idea of kind of having your, use your silent mode, modulate a couple destinations, and maybe have it on a rate, a free running rate of a hertz. I'm gonna put it back on sync for now. Now length, uh, this is an interesting uh, one. I don't know why they call it length, but basically what this is going to do is, let me go back to a four step pattern real quick. I will do just up and we'll turn the rate down slower so you can hear this. All right, so we'll go one. We'll do a playback. All right, so we'll put on three steps right now. So we got the Jaws pattern back. So the length, if I turn this length down to negative 100, listen. It got real staccato, right? It's like me going like this. I'm playing that manually on the keys right now. Watch the keyboard. Right, now if I turn the length up to positive 100, there's no space in between the notes of my step sequence. That's all that's doing. Swing, this will add that cool swing hip hop feel. It'll basically shift your information slightly off of the grid to give it more of a groove. 
This is super helpful if you're playing a uh, step sequencer. A lot of step sequencers are very robotic. Like that's why 1980s music is so like da 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 da. Uh, it's just so machine gunny at points. It's because a lot some of the synths didn't have swing back then, if you can believe that. So here how the swing actually adds a element of musicality to it, like you're actually playing it. So that's a fun thing to play around with. Well, that covers all of the features really in the step sequencer. Let's jump in to the actual MIDI editor, which is really cool, and I like this. So if you load up a sequence, you actually see the MIDI. Now, the coolest thing about this is you can create your own MIDI files for this. I'd, I recently found that out, and I think that's absolutely awesome. So we'll do that real quick. I'm going to just re-initialize I'm going to initialize this patch. So we have this now. All right, so I'm going to record an actual pass of me playing something, and then we're going to export it and then import it back into Dune's MIDI, just so you can see how this process works. All right, I only flubbed up probably like five notes, so now I, I need to quantize this real quick, and I think I did hit an extra note somewhere. Is right there. All right, let's listen to this real quick. All right, and I'm gonna take this note, I missed it once, pop it right there. All right, cool, so this is what we're gonna roll with. Now, I found it works best to put when you're exporting the MIDI that you want to create back in with Dune and export it back into Dune's MIDI editor. Uh, it works best to put it at your first, or to start that, uh, your actual MIDI file at your first bar of your DAW, or at least in Logic it does. So now I'm going to export this as, we'll call it Chords New. I'll just put it on my desktop for now. All right, so remember what this sounds like. All right, I'm going to mute this and open up Dune, and I'm going to turn on the ARP, activate it for all. We're going to go to our step, we're going to go to our MIDI, so change from the step sequencer to the MIDI. And now I'm going to select Load MIDI File, going to go to my, net, my desktop and choose Chords New. There it is. So now if I play a note, it only plays the one, well, what's going on? We need to change this mode to playback. And there is the MIDI that we just created and exported. So I think that's really cool for scratching tracks. There are a bunch of fun little patterns that you can mess around with. So if it's a polyphonic prog progression in the MIDI where you can see multiple notes at once, you need to have it on playback. If it's a uh, monophonic one, you can, you can get away with like a dynamic, but listen to the difference real quick. See, if I have it on dynamic, it doesn't play all the chords. You need to have it on playback. Let me try chord. I've never actually tried that. Yep. Now, playback it is. If you have polyphonic, playback. If it's a monophonic one, you can just do the dynamic. All right, so there is a crash course in Dune's arpeggiator slash step sequencer. I'll see you in the next video.